Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to find hidden information in your PDF documents for things like output color, file size, file dimensions, a few other things that are important, especially for those folks who work in prepress. So I have a few different files in front of me here. I'm going to start with this business card. And I always want to know right off the bat what are the page dimensions for this PDF. A simple way to find that out is just to go to File and click Properties. Here this is going to give you some information about your PDF as far as what the file name is, who created it, what application created it, when it was created it, when it was created, excuse me, what uh, PDF version this is. This is important for those folks who deal with interactive PDFs because you have to hi have a higher PDF version in order to enable some interactive elements. Where it's located on your hard drive, what the file size is, and right here what the page size is. So this is important to note because I'm dealing with a business card. Business card needs to be three and a half by uh, two. So by seeing this page size as 3.97 by 2.47, I pretty much know that this file probably has bleed on it. Another area that you can have to enable the, this little box down here so that you can show your um, PDF dimensions at all time, you go up to Acrobat and Preferences and under the Page Display uh, tab here, you can click Always Show Document Page Size. With that enabled, every time you open up a PDF, it'll automatically show the page dimensions down here in the bottom left-hand corner. I can also click this Show Art, Trim, and Bleed boxes. So once I do that, you can see these two additional lines show up here. This is an indicator of where the trim is and where the bleed is. So right off the bat, I know that this file does have bleed on it, even if Canva didn't do a very good job of generating it properly. At least it's supposedly there. Um, I usually leave that off all the time because um, I look for it in another location, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, so you can have those two things on or off all the time by going up to your preferences. So once I know my uh, page size, my page dimensions, I want to know a little bit more about the colors and everything that are going to be output for this uh, business card. So to do that, I go into my print production area. I go to my output preview. Now there's a lot of information that is available to you in this output preview tool that a lot of people don't fully take advantage of, I think. So I wanted to talk about a few of the different items that are available to us as prepress workers to show a few different things about your PDF document. The first area is to show your simulation profile. Now, if there is a built-in profile, by default, that'll be listed at the very top. Um, I'll show that in just a moment on another file. But in this case, um, my default is to show US web coded swap version two. You can play around with these and you can see how if you select these differently, some of the outputs show up a little bit different based on that simulation profile. A lot of times people are going to view things as an RGB file, especially maybe they were, uh, like I said, this was a Canva file. So if they were designing this in Canva, maybe this is what they see on their screen. But this is what is going to be printed. And you can see there's a much more muted color value to this red than what was available here in the Adobe RGB. This is going to be important for certain files because of that muted color. Maybe your customer expects it to print really bright red like this and all of us know that the color gamut for RGB is much higher than it is for CMYK uh, or spot color printing. So what you see on the screen is not necessarily what you're going to get when you print. So it's important to kind of temper the expectations of your customer or to draw their attention to something like this to basically just let them know, hey, look, you know, this red is not going to print as bright as maybe as you think it is. 
So that's the uh, various simulation profiles. Down here at the bottom, you have dot gain. This is going to show you a better representation of how this is going to print if you send this file off to a monochrome, uh, monochrome printer. So if I'm going to, even though the, the file itself is in color, if I send this off as is over to a black and white toner machine, this is how it's going to look. This is important if you have certain elements on your page that are very very light to begin with uh, that's not really important for this file because you have these you know darker areas even that red is really dark but let's say you had a very very light blue or something like that when you convert it and print it on a, uh, monochrome, a monochrome machine there may be very very light areas that maybe only show up as instead of being like 58 percent like this is maybe it's only four percent three percent so it's important if that is the case to either go back and change those to a darker value or inform your customer hey you might want to darken this little you know phone icon because if we print it on a black and white printer it's going to look very very light or not even show up at all so by switching to those different simulation profiles you can get a little bit better representation of how the uh, job is actually going to print on your devices I don't really mess around with the uh, any of this information here. I find that doing this, the simulate paper color or to set a background color it doesn't really change things too much. Um, you know, even if you're going to print this on a on a very very light blue paper, for for instance, um, you might see a little bit better of how it's going to look like. But you know, to be honest with you, I don't think that's a very accurate representation. Um, <clears throat> here under the show area, I this is where we can find out a little bit more information. Uh, before I click on this area here, if I just click on the show art trim and bleed boxes, again that's just like we did earlier in the video where we can see where the trim and the bleed areas are set. If I click this set page boxes, that's the same as over here on the set page boxes in the print production tools, but if I click that and bring this up this also shows you information about your bleed box your trim box you can also set that information here so if I want to change this I can do it um, I can change it for this particular page I can change it for all pages I'm not really going to go into it uh, too much today but uh, this does show you more information and that's available directly from the output preview area so I'll just check that off so here we can see under the show all this is just going to show everything that's going to be inside your PDF document, whether it's printing an R or whether it's set in RGB color, whether it's set in spot color and CMYK, monochrome, whatever it is. If I check this or I click this uh, drop down, I can choose certain things in here to see which part of this file is CMYK or RGB, for instance. So if I click on the CMYK, you can notice right away everything disappears. That doesn't mean that it's not there, it just means that there's no CMYK values that are associated with any of those items that are on the page. So if I immediately switch to RGB, you can see all everything comes right back in. And that's because these items are all set to RGB colors. I can find out that information about that by coming to where the uh, preview area hit is and checking object inspector. You'll notice that the show area automatically gets grayed out and I click on here and this will give me some more information about what the color profile or the color space is for that particular item that I clicked on. So here I clicked on this you know, uh, dark blue box or whatever it is and it shows me right away. This is set as device RGB and it's actually set as 100% uh, RGB so it's essentially black. It also will give you information about whether there's overprinting here um, which is also important but if you if I click on different parts of the um, of the document you can see here this is a filled path with uh, uh, shading. Different things it will tell you about your document which is uh, uh, can be very very important. I'll go back to simulate or uh, separations here. I can check to see also which 
uh, I, which elements are which. So in this case, if I click on images, everything disappears. I know that there's no image on this actual PDF document. If I click on solid color, this shows me where all the solids are. This shows me where gradients are. Uh, the, this is uh, items that are set as text. So even though sometimes you may have, if I go back to all, maybe this is, there's text items here, but if you click on text here, they disappear. That may show you that that's not actually editable text anymore. Maybe those are just vectors or it's an image, for instance. So those are, uh, those can be uh, very important if you're gonna be running additional uh, pre-flights for your file. Maybe you need to do something that uh, deals with, uh, you know, increasing uh, the brightness of all you, of your colors, for instance, or excuse me, uh, the brightness of the colors in your images, for instance. If you have something that's looks like text, but it's actually set as an image for whatever reason, that'll also include your, your pre-flight will also include edits to that, and maybe you don't want that. So by identifying all of those different elements on your PDF, you can uh, change things around easier. You can uh, make sure that your pre-flights are only affecting certain parts of your, of your PDF document. All very, very important information um, when you're working in pre-press. Uh, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is the color warnings. By checking the show overprinting in rich black, this will show you in uh, yellow any areas that are overprint. It also shows you in this color here, which you can change to a different color if you want. Um, but this will show you items that are set to rich black. So in this case, the crop marks here are set as rich black. It's not really important for that, but if you had text that's very, very small, obviously, if you're going to print this on a Offset press, registering four colors with very, very small uh, text is going to be, uh, you know, very, very hard. So you want to make sure to go back and change those from rich black to 100% pure black before you send it off to uh, uh, press. So those are the different parts of the output preview area. Um, I'm going to close this out and just open in one of the other documents so you can see a little bit more information about those. I'll go back in here and go to my output preview. And again, if I just kind of check off some of these uh, separation boxes, I can see how this is going to output. But I want to come in here and make sure that there's no RGB elements. So if I come and check that, you can see everything disappears. So I know not only these boxes here, the text, but even the photos are set as CMYK as well. So if I was going to send this off to uh, my customer has a proof. This, what they see here is going to be a better representation of what is actually going to be printed because even the images are set as CMYK, for instance. Uh, the last one is a spot color brochure. So if I notice right away in my separations area, I have this spot color. And if I come in here and I click spot color, you can see that these uh, different elements here are all set as spot color. The reason that the text does not show up as well is because that's set as process black. So if I come back here and go all, if I turn off my process black, you can see that um, those are set as, you know, either 100% process black or a shade of black. So that's why they're not gonna show up under the spot color. If I go to CMYK, those will show up just fine. So for this one, if I go to my color warnings and I show overprinting, you can see that this area here is set to overprint. So this is gonna create a problem when we go to press because this area here is gonna overprint on top of this PMS color, whereas the rest of the black items are gonna knock out. So what you see here is gonna look a little bit different than what you see right here. This is gonna be um, and important for the overall density of the black, it's going to look different. So you want to make sure to maintain consistency in your file 
so that you have consistency on your uh, print. Either set everything to overprint or everything to knock out. Always consult with your um, press operator first. They'll be able to tell you what to do. In this case, since it's a, um, if I go back to my separations, everything is a 24% Pantone color, they'll probably want everything knocked out instead of overprinting because it'll be too dark. So that'll give you a, a better idea if, or alert you basically to anything that is set as overprint. Same thing if I have rich black. In this case, rich black is not gonna be as important because this is a, essentially just a two color job. Um, but by clicking through all of those things, I can identify what the different elements are, what kind of color space they're using, all of the things like overprint, rich black, very, very important stuff to um, identify before you even send a proof or before you set up your file to be printed or plated, excuse me, or printed. So I hope that gives a little bit more information about what the output preview uh, box can do for you, how important it is for those folks who work in prepress. Very, very important. I use it every single day at, at, uh, at work because you have to identify all of those things before you can advance it to the next stage. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. I'm happy to start a little conversation about stuff like this. Again, the whole point is just to try to help some folks out there that maybe don't know a little bit about this and maybe they're struggling with, you know, why does my print always look darker or um, why do certain pre-flights not apply to certain parts of my PDF for some reason. Usually it's because things like that where it's set as RGB or it's set as a spot color or maybe you think it's set as text where it's actually an image. All of the information that you can get from the output preview area will identify those things for you. Thanks for watching folks. I appreciate a like, a share, and a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Links down below to the Patreon page if you want to support me a little bit further. As always, thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it. Leave a comment down if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.